research is still getting by with conflicts of interest. Uh, current studies on a surgical trial for bone growth and another one on the drug Neurontin have just come to light for being unethical. Evidently, they're withholding information that's it's, important. <laughs> it's amazing what happens in research, especially when Big Pharma is connected with it, or if there are conflicts of interest. And both of these trials ex exemplify that big time. We're looking at the Neurontin trial. What happened is about 15 years ago, finally is coming to light today and was just reported upon, showed that what the drug company did is they involved a lot of doctors and a lot of patients, 2,700 patients and somewhere around 700 doctors supplying them. And the research study was done by who? The advertising department of the company, not the research arm. So it was just to promote it. It's only to promote the drug, to put it in front of doctors' eyes, tell them a little something about how to dose it, and then they found from the results of publishing that trial that it worked. Doctors bought more Neurontin and they used bigger doses. And, of course, there was nothing new published by that. But see, this isn't even fair to the patients or the researchers or the doctors because they don't even know. They're not even telling them that it's a seeding trial. Exactly. And then they wind up making more profit, which is fine. And it's, it's, but it's, it's not illegal. They can do this. It's just unethical. unethical. Yeah. And so that's what happened. And finally, it was reported. Well, let's talk about this Medtronic trial that was a surgical trial because uh -huh. the doctors made some really big bucks doing this study, yes, like $62 million. It's amazing. So what they did in this, in this particular study, they're looking at a bone growth enhancer that they could use in spinal surgery to make the bones heal faster. And indeed, what they published showed that, and they went ahead and did it. But what they failed to report is that 10 to 50% of the time, there were complications like cancer and infections and other kinds of problems that were huge, like sterility and bone dissolution some of the time. Well, that's great. So they're trying to make your bone fuse, and yet it can cause bone dissolution. Well, that, yeah. it's not like it happens that often, but it should at least be something that's reported. That's like when they give people antidepressants and say, oh, a side effect might be that Depression. you could commit suicide, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, it's leaving them out entirely. This is what the problem is in this particular case. And it's not like the neurosurgeons didn't know what they were doing, but it never got published. And maybe it wasn't the neurosurgeon's fault. We don't know. Whoever published the article. Maybe nobody even told them what the results were. Oh, I think they probably knew what the results were. But they liked having that money. Well, they got something like $62 million divided amongst 15 different researchers. That's only $4 million a person. Not bad for doing one clinical trial. And, of course, it's, it's unethical to accept money for things like that, too, because of the conflicts of interest. But it's a seeding trial, so it's all just for well, marketing Well, the seeding the trial was Neurontin. Oh, I thought this was a seeding trial, No, this trial is not too. a seeding trial. Well, this is just this an is just unethical out, trial. This is just <laughs> dishonest. And it's not the first time things like that have happened. There was a study at Harvard as well. It was done by a Dr. Joseph Biederman, who was a pediatric uh, doctor there, who was pe like a pediatric psychiatrist. And what he did is he got millions of dollars from the drug company to do research on kids with ADD and to... Con and to try to convince doctors and the public that in fact what they, these kids had was bipolar disease. So he oh, was exaggerating in spades. And of course the company making the products for bipolar <laughs> disorder were very happy to see the research. So they gave him money for a facility. And by the time he came to his census, he was over his head. Of course he lost his position at, at Harvard. And that's not the only case. I mean, there are other cases where we're looking at, at people who have published things and made up data and uh, didn't do the study at all. And when that finally gets uh, uh, found out, all kinds of havoc results from it. So we've got. I think sometimes too, what happens with marketing is they want to just get something out there, and even if it does turn out to be something negative, you might not even remember what it was. You just recognize the name of that drug or that <laughs> procedure, whatever it happens to be. Sure. But the fact that they're withholding the negative stuff just seems like it's illegal. And, and I mean, to say that it's not illegal and it's only unethical, I mean, who makes it and who makes that decision that it's not illegal? Is that because of ties with the pharmaceutical company and the FDA again? Well, there, there'd have to be some of that, you'd imagine. I mean, how else could it happen? And yet at the same time, the people, the drug company that was responsible for the bone growth factor uh, got itself in a jam because they were 
they were not telling everybody what they did. They, they, they didn't put it in their paper. They did put it in, in the insert in the package, but not the research. Now, doctors who are surgeons who are wanting to learn about this are not going to be reading uh, the inside of the package to find out what happened in a clinical trial. And so basically, this information becomes hidden. It doesn't come to light. And yet, at the same time, the company is somewhat protected because it's been reported to the FDA, and the FDA made them put it in a black box warning. And so, so, but when you talk about looking at the insert, you have to read all this teeny tiny little yeah. print that's folded up in this well, little piece should, of paper. And it should be something that's honest. You should you should disclose the problems that you have with whatever product you have, because otherwise people are going to be misled about how to do things, and particularly the physicians are going to be misled. How would you like to be relying on a doctor who had information uh, that he got from re reading his journals, like a faithful doctor should? And then turns out the information's incorrect, you have a bad result, and you have to either have a complication or have your surgery redone. It's like it's just a little bit too much. So you can't trust the trials, and then you can't trust the doctors because the doctors are trusting the trials. So where do you go? And this is what's wrong with a lot of medical research. When we, the, the Office of Technology Assessment looked at how much good science there was in medical research, that number was stunning. When they looked at the amount of good clinical, good research, good science that's in the practice of medicine, that number was stunning. And I know I was shocked when I found out what those numbers were. When it turns out that there about 15% of what we do in clinical practice is good solid science and 85% is intelligent guesses or built on information that's not true, but we don't know it. But when we look at the research itself, Office of Technology Assessment said that only 1% of what's published in our medical journals is good, solid science. Doctors That's really don't hard want to, hear to that. believe. Yeah. I know I have a hard time with that too, but the more I've read about this, you know, over the last 15 years, we've reviewed a lot of articles that have talked about this because it's been our business to do that. And it it is true. Doesn't and, it make you wonder how this happens? It's like... Whose head well, is in the sand? It's I mean, people who are not interested in people. It's people who are interested in money. money. And the yeah. conflicts of interest usually make things happen the way they do. So I would say follow the dollars, and you'll find out why answers come out the way they do. And be sure that if you're doing something with your doctor that's going to involve a major procedure or some kind of major drug, do a little research yourself. Maybe even get somebody else involved to help do the research for you.